Uh, let's not beat around the bush here. The chemicals are toxic. They are known as forever chemicals. They do not easily break down. Instead, they accumulate in the environment and in the human body. Well, I guess my question to you is, when you take your children or your grandchildren trick-or-treating, do you let them have mystery candy? Why in the world are we allowing ourselves to drink mystery chemicals? PFAS or PFAS are polyfluoroalkyl substances or perfluoroalkyl substances. They're also known as forever chemicals because they are pretty persistent in the environment. You know, there's an old saying that says nothing lasts forever. Unfortunately, nothing, that is, except for fluorinated chemicals. These chemicals have been used in a lot of different products from uh, microwave popcorn bags to uh, Teflon pans to firefighting foam. And they're effective at those uses because they are water resistant, they resist oil, and they're also pretty heat proof. PFAS chemicals were first discovered in 1938, uh, accidentally actually, by DuPont scientists. They were used a few years later in the Manhattan Project in some of the uranium research. And once that was declassified, they became more prevalent in consumer goods. Some of these chemicals are associated with a number of negative health effects. It's estimated that 97% of Americans have detectable concentrations of PFAS in their blood. It's hard to say exactly what health effects each of them will have. There's a lot of research going on with that now, and some of what we can tell is that some of these chemicals affect infant birth weight, they affect cholesterol, they affect uh, the developmental and immune systems, and uh, there may be others as well. In Melvindale, in my district, PFAS just oozed out of the ground into the roadway and residents are still searching for answers about where it came from. PFAS chemicals are getting into our waterways in lots of different ways. Sometimes it's through uh, groundwater near military bases. If uh, the military base had used firefighting foam that contains PFAS, in other cases, the town might be near a landfill that has PFAS leaking into the groundwater as well. There are a lot of water treatment plants around the country that are looking to figure out how to take the PFAS out of their water supply. There is a way to do it that's fairly easy but a little bit expensive, and you can install a carbon filtration. Uh, there are other ways that some other water utilities are experimenting with to remove different types of PFAS from their water. Communities across the nation have asked us to provide a comprehensive approach to understanding PFAS and protecting drinking water. The EPA has set advisory levels for PFOA and PFOS. Those are two different kinds of PFAS chemicals in drinking water, but that guidance is not necessarily enforceable. So there are some lawmakers on Capitol Hill that are interested in trying to push the EPA toward a more enforceable guideline or a regulation for PFAS in drinking water. Uh, and there's a lot of attention to that, especially from the towns that are most affected by this. New Jersey and other states have repeatedly urged the EPA to move forward with setting nationwide regulatory limits for PFAS under the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act, but the EPA has been very slow to act. New Jersey therefore had no choice but to move ahead to set its own guidelines. Some states like Massachusetts and New Jersey have decided that they're not going to wait on the EPA to try to uh, give them guidance on how to regulate drinking water. So they're moving forward with their own limits in some cases, or just guidance. And a lot of other states are sort of looking to them as leaders in this area. A lot of communities are calling for stronger federal action on PFAS chemicals, and it's going to be hard for the EPA and other agencies to ignore that. You can expect to see a lot closer attention to these chemicals from not only the EPA, but also maybe the FDA and others on this in the next couple of years. To date, however, the EPA has yet to act, but it's time for much more than just that. It's time for us in Congress to take long overdue action. It's time for us to push for stronger standards, invest in cleanup, and improve protections for those who have suffered from the effects of contamination.